if our listeners out there right now was, was saying, look, I'm in that $100,000 phase, and I just don't know how to push it any further. Is there one thing you look back on and say, boy, if I wouldn't have done this, I don't know if anything else would have fell in place? Oh, boy. You know, there was, there were several pivotal hires that I made. Um, you know, we when I kind of look at it as, um, you know, as there's five stages that you kind of go through as a business owner. Um, the first phase you start out with is when you're doing the physical work, right? You're the technician in the field. And by the way, there's people that bypass this stage completely. Uh, they start day one, never going out into the field. And I know that sure. breaks a lot of people's brains, but it's it's actually totally possible to do that. Well, fran- franchise system, right? That's that's what yeah. they bought into. So they don't, they don't start out in the field. Very few franchisees start out or franchise ors really start out in the field. Yeah, because they, they're loaded with systems right, right. out of the gate. Um, but, you know, that, that very first hire that's so critical is, you know, the, the lead technician out in the field that actually now is responsible for doing the work. He's driving his own rig and he's going out there and he's doing the work and you're not there. You're not there hovering over his shoulder telling him, hey, you missed a spot. Hey, don't forget about this. Hey, make sure you talk to the customer about this. Um, that is probably one of the number one things. If someone's at that $100,000 range and they're trying to break free the sooner you get off the truck and you get out of the field you get off the wand you get off the squeegee you get off the pressure washer the carpet cleaning rig whatever it is you get out of there um the quicker you your your business will then grow that next step and i think you know a lot of people they feel like oh my gosh i don't have any time i don't have any time uh, because they're out in the field and they're doing all these other things as soon as you get out of the field you have lots of time a lot more time at least you have more time to, you know, rather than spend 25, 30, 40 hours a week in the field, now you have 25, 30, 40 hours a week to do sales and to schedule jobs. And suddenly your plate is so clear to where you can go to all those chamber meetings you've been wanting to go to and going in networking and going and calling in on those, you know, big apartment communities or HOAs or condo jobs um, that frees you up so much. And uh, there's people who I've seen who have been forced out of the field due to health circumstances. Uh, one, one of my um, good friends uh, who owns a, a business over in the, in the Midwest, he, has, he was forced out of the field due to um, having seizures. And he could have a seizure at any moment in time. It forced him out of the field and his business grew faster than anybody else that I've seen uh, because he couldn't be in the field. He just had to force himself out. Um, so, get yourself out of the field and then the next pivotal uh hire which is really really scary is hiring an office person <laughs> having someone yeah. answer the phones so now it's not you answering the phones anymore it's somebody else that's answering those phones and now you're just focused on sales and then the next pivotal hire after that is a salesperson who actually goes out and does sales for you and now that kind of moves you up into a little bit more of just like a general management type role to where you have operations lockdown um, you know, at the time when we, uh, when I sold this last year, we had operations managers, operations directors, operation, uh, you know, admin op- office managers, sales managers, sales guys. Um, and it really was just purely general management at that point. And so the work, the time commitment is just so minuscule when you start getting to that stage because you've delegated enough of your tasks out. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important. And there is a scary factor there. I remember um, shop space was something for me that was uh, scary. I remember yeah. taking on my first shop and I thought, man, this is like, you know, and it was minuscule. Looking back, you know, it was like $700 a month. It's like, oh, man, am I going to? And I remember laying there thinking, am I going to be able to make that? I mean, am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to do that? And in two years, I think we were in 1,200, 1,300 square foot. And in two years, um, we we rented a place of 5,000 square feet. And I remember when I did that, I remember seeing the same thing. Am I going to be able to afford I don't know if we're going to do it. You know? <laughs> it's always scary. Yeah, it's always scary. But you're right. You've got to take that step. You've got to work. If you're trying to scale your business, you've got to work to get off that truck. And uh, one, of my favorite, oh, sorry. Saying, one of my favorite quotes is uh, to get somewhere that you've never been means to do something that you've never done and you know all of those people don't understand even if you have a large business you're still making decisions that terrify you i mean someone someone looks at someone and they're like wow they're just so good at business they have 
I remember thinking about, you know, someone who had this big business. And I talked to them like, man, you just got all these things going on. Everything's good for you, man. I wish I could be there. And he's like, Brandon, I, I'm terrified. You know, I, I still have moments where I'm wanting to make a, you know, a decision on something and it just gives me butterflies and anxiety. And I'm like, oh man, you know, is this the right move? Is this not the right move? Um, you have to be uncomfortable. And, and that's usually a sign that you're actually growing and, and, and progressing is that uncomfortability. Yeah. So fast forward. So this was uh, 2011. Uh, come up to uh, last year, your person that you've seen out in the field was 30 trucks. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, you surpassed that by a double, right? Uh, towards the end there, you had uh, 70, 70 some employees. Um, I don't know how many trucks, but uh, at any rate, you you did it. And I, I would say that, uh, you know, from what I know of you, um, you definitely, systems played a large part in that. You're a systems master. Uh, you you like everything to be systematic. And when you put those things in place, you're, you're able to duplicate. And uh, duplication is, is very important, is it not? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's so huge. To me, I feel like, and I tell people that, uh, if you can become a master at just two things, only two things, your business can be a tool for you rather than you being a tool for the for the business. Uh, right. the, the two things are training and delegation. Um, you know, so many people they they stress out so much about uh, getting new technicians and getting new employees onto their team, and they get so frustrated and so angry because they bring on an employee. They work with them for you know 40 hours, 80 hours, getting them trained, and then they quit. And then they're just like so frustrated and so angry because they just spent all this time and energy training this one person uh, with their mouth, you know, with their mouth and showing them in person. Um, but I mean, even doing small things like videoing your record, you know, your training program, and when it when an employee comes in, they're not in the field day one. They're actually in your shop or your office or even, you know, at their own home watching videos and, you know, learning all the basics, you know, and if you just, it, the next time you train an employee, if you just hand them your, your camera cell phone and, um, you know, and have them just video you training them, uh, that's words that you'll never have to say ever again. You'll never have, no matter what employee you bring them on board, you can have them watch that video instead of you having to be the person to say it. And that to me is kind of the definition of a system is if you can, you know, put document down through either video or some kind of written format, a training system so that when someone comes in, it doesn't require you or someone on your team to exert all that energy to, uh, you know, just through time of talking and showing um, that can be done in a, you know, automated way that just drastically reduces the amount of time that you have to spend on uh, doing that yeah. stuff. So it just duplicates yourself and doesn't require you to be the person that has to do that. Yeah, that's it's, I learned that, uh, you know, I spent a brief time uh, managing hotels and one of the biggest downfalls of hotel, hotel management was they would, they would find a person that uh, always showed up on time and they always did a good job. Maybe they were a front office uh, person, a desk clerk. They were great at what they did, and they immediately made them a manager. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and no. They, <laughs> they fail. And they're like, I can't believe. And so what they did is they took a, an A player in the realm that they were in and ruined them That's to so where they were a, a worthless employee because they, they, they would just push them up, right, because they were good at what they were doing. But there wasn't... And I used to say all the time, I said, I'm not willing to, to make anybody a manager until you can show me that you can duplicate yourself. If Man, you can, that is money right there. That's gold. If, That's if gold. You can take a guy, if you can take a front or a, an entry level person and you can, you can train them to your job and make them do as good as you do. That's a manager. You just Man, duplicate. Yeah. yeah. I love that, Michael. Yeah, that's I, that's that's gold right there. That's good. Yeah. So anyway, you've got this big company. Uh, you're you're rolling along, and <laughs> 
Stay tuned for our next episode of AWC TV by following